Anarcho-naturism, also anarchist naturism and naturist anarchism, appeared in the late 19th century as the union of anarchist and naturist philosophies. In many of the alternative communities established in Britain in the early 1900s, nudism, anarchism, vegetarianism and free love were accepted as part of a politically radical way of life." In the 1920s, the inhabitants of the anarchist community at Whiteway, near Stroud in Gloucestershire, "...shocked the conservative residents of the area with their shameless nudity." Mainly, it had importance within individualist anarchist circles in Spain, France, Portugal, and Cuba. Anarcho naturism advocates vegetarianism, free love, nudism, hiking, and an ecological worldview within anarchist groups and outside them. Anarcho-naturism also promotes an ecological worldview, small ecovillages, and most prominently nudism as a way to avoid the artificiality of the industrial mass society of modernity. Naturist individualist anarchists see the individual in their biological, physical and psychological aspects and try to eliminate social determinations. History <inaudible> Early influences An important early influence on anarchist naturism was the thought of Henry David Thoreau, Leo Tolstoy and Elise Recluse. Thoreau was an American author, poet, naturalist, tax resister, development critic, surveyor, historian, philosopher, and leading transcendentalist. He is best known for his book Walden, a reflection upon simple living in natural surroundings, and his essay, Civil Disobedience, an argument for individual resistance to civil government in moral opposition to an unjust state. His thought is an early influence on green anarchism, but with an emphasis on the individual experience of the natural world, influencing later naturist currents. Simple living as a rejection of a materialist lifestyle and self-sufficiency were Thoreau's goals, and the whole project was inspired by transcendentalist philosophy. Many have seen in Thoreau one of the precursors of ecologism and anarcho-primitivism represented today in John Zerzan. For George Woodcock this attitude can be also motivated by certain idea of resistance to progress and of rejection of the growing materialism which is the nature of American society in the mid-19th century. John Zerzan himself included the text, Excursions, 1863, by Thoreau in his edited compilation of anti civilization writings called Against Civilization, Readings and Reflections from 1999. France For the influential French anarchist Elysée Recluse, naturism was at the same time a physical means of revitalization, a rapport with the body completely different from the hypocrisy and taboos which prevailed at the time, a more convivial way to see life in society, and an incentive to respect the planet. Thus naturism develops in France, in particular under the influence of Elysée Recluse, at the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century among anarchistic communities resulting from utopian socialism. 
In France, later important propagandists of anarcho-naturism include Henri Zisley and Émile Gravel who collaborated in La Nouvelle Humanité, La Naturien, Le Sauvage, L'Ordre Naturel, and La Vie Naturelle. Their ideas were important in individualist anarchist circles in France as well as Spain, where Federico Urales, pseudonym of Joan Monsigny, promoted the ideas of Gravel and Zisley in La Revista Blanca (1898–1905). Zisley's political activity primarily aimed at supporting a return to natural life through writing and practical involvement, stimulated lively confrontations within and outside the anarchist environment. Zisley vividly criticized progress and civilization, which he regarded as absurd, ignoble, and filthy. He openly opposed industrialization, arguing that machines were inherently authoritarian defended nudism, advocated a non-dogmatic and non-religious adherence to the «laws of nature», recommended a lifestyle based on limited needs and self-sufficiency, and disagreed with vegetarianism, which he considered «anti-scientific». Richard D. Son comments on the influence of naturist views in the wider French anarchist movement, in her memoir of her anarchist years that was serialized in Le Matin in 1913, Rorette Maitrejon made much of the strange food regimens of some of the Compagnons. She described the «tragic bandits» of the Bonnot gang as refusing to eat meat or drink wine, preferring plain water. Her humorous comments reflected the practices of the «naturist» wing of individualist anarchists who favoured a simpler, more «natural» lifestyle centred on a vegetarian diet. In the 1920s, this wing was expressed by the journal Le Neo-Naturien, Revue des idées philosophiques et naturiennes. Contributors condemned the fashion of smoking cigarettes, especially by young women. A long article of 1927 actually connected cigarette smoking with cancer. Others distinguished between vegetarians, who forswore the eating of meat, from the stricter, vegetalians, who ate nothing but vegetables. An anarchist named G. Butto, who made this distinction, opened a restaurant called the Foyer Végétalien in the 19th arrondissement in 1923. Other issues of the journal included vegetarian recipes. In 1925, when the young anarchist and future detective novelist Leo Mallet arrived in Paris from Montpellier, he initially lodged with anarchists who operated another vegetarian restaurant that served only vegetables, with neither fish nor eggs. Nutritional concerns coincided with other means of encouraging health bodies, such as nudism and gymnastics. For a while in the 1920s, after they were released from jail for anti-war and birth control activities, Jean and Eugene Humbert retreated to the relative safety of the "...integral living." movement that promoted nude sunbathing and physical fitness, which were seen as integral aspects of health in the Greek sense of gymnos, meaning nude. This back to nature, primitivist current was not a monopoly of the left, the same interests were echoed by right-wing Germans in the interwar era. In France, however, these proclivities were mostly associated with anarchists, insofar as they suggested an ideal of self-control and the rejection of social taboos and prejudices. <laughs> Henry Zisley 
Henry Zisley, born in Paris, November 2, 1872, died in 1945, was a French individualist anarchist and naturist. He participated alongside Henry Bailey and Émile Gravel in many journals such as La Nouvelle Humanité and La Vie Naturelle, which promoted anarchist naturism. In 1902, he was one of the main initiators, alongside Georges Butteau and Sophie Zykowska, of the cooperative colony de Vaux established in Essems sur Marne, in Lane. Zisley's political activity, primarily aimed at supporting a return to natural life through writing and practical involvement, stimulated lively confrontations within and outside the anarchist environment. Zisley vividly criticized progress and civilization, which he regarded as absurd, ignoble, and filthy. He openly opposed industrialization, arguing that machines were inherently authoritarian, defended nudism, advocated a non dogmatic and non religious adherence to the laws of nature, recommended a lifestyle based on limited needs and self sufficiency, and disagreed with vegetarianism, which he considered anti scientific. Topic: Spain. This relationship between anarchism and naturism was quite important at the end of the 1920s in Spain. Isaac Puente, an influential Spanish anarchist during the 1920s and 1930s and an important propagandist of anarcho-naturism, was a militant of both the CNT Anarcho-Syndicalist Trade Union and Iberian Anarchist Federation. He published the book El Comunismo Libertario y Otras Proclamas Insurreccionales y Naturistas n. Libertarian Communism and Other Insurrectionary and Naturist Proclaims in 1933, which sold around 100,000 copies, and wrote the final document for the Extraordinary Confederal Congress of Zaragoza of 1936 which established the main political line for the CNT for that year. Puente was a doctor who approached his medical practice from a naturist point of view. He saw naturism as an integral solution for the working classes, alongside Neo-Malthusianism, and believed it concerned the living being while anarchism addressed the social being. He believed capitalist societies endangered the well-being of humans from both a socio-economic and sanitary viewpoint, and promoted anarcho-communism alongside naturism as a solution. This ecological tendency in Spanish anarchism was strong enough as to call the attention of the CNT Fi in Spain. Daniel Guerin in Anarchism: From Theory to Practice reports. Spanish anarcho-syndicalism had long been concerned to safeguard the autonomy of what it called, "...affinity groups". There were many adepts of naturism and vegetarianism among its members, especially among the poor peasants of the South. Both these ways of living were considered suitable for the transformation of the human being in preparation for a libertarian society. At the Saragossa Congress the members did not forget to consider the fate of groups of naturists and nudists, "...unsuited to industrialization," as these groups would be unable to supply all their own needs. The Congress anticipated that their delegates to the meetings of the Confederation of Communes would be able to negotiate special economic agreements with the other agricultural and industrial communes. On the eve of a vast, bloody, social transformation, the CNT did not think it foolish to try to meet the infinitely varied aspirations of individual human beings.
Topic: Cuba. The historian Kerwin R. Schaefer in his study of Cuban anarchism reports anarcho-naturism as a third strand within the island's anarchist movement, alongside anarcho-communism and anarcho-syndicalism. Naturism offered a global alternative health and lifestyle movement. Naturists focused on redefining one's life to live simply, to eat cheap but nutritious vegetarian diets, and to raise one's own food if possible. The countryside was posited as a romantic alternative to urban living, and some naturists even promoted what they saw as the healthful benefits of nudism. Globally, the naturist movement counted anarchists, liberals, and socialists as its followers. However, in Cuba a particular, anarchist, dimension evolved led by people like Adrián del Val, who spearheaded the Cuban effort to shift naturism's focus away from only individual health to naturism having a social emancipatory function. Schaefer reports the influence that anarcho-naturism had outside naturist circles. So, f or instance, nothing inherently prevented an anarcho-syndicalist in the Havana Restaurant Workers' Union from supporting the alternative health care programs of the anarcho-naturists and seeing those alternative practices as revolutionary. Quote dot, quote, anarcho naturists promoted a rural ideal, simple living, and being in harmony with nature as ways to save the laborers from the increasingly industrialized character of Cuba. Besides promoting an early 20th century, back to the land. Movement. They used these romantic images of nature to illustrate how far removed a capitalist industrialized Cuba had departed from an anarchist view of natural harmony. Quote, the main propagandizer in Cuba of anarcho naturism was the Catalonia born. Adrián del Val, aka Palmiro de Lidia. Over the following decades, Del Val became a constant presence in not only the anarchist press that proliferated in Cuba but also mainstream literary publications. From 1912 to 1913 he edited the freethinking journal El Ordaz. Then he began his largest publishing job by helping to found and edit the monthly alternative health magazine that followed the anarcho-naturist line Pro Vida. Other countries Naturism also met anarchism in the United Kingdom. In many of the alternative communities established in Britain in the early 1900s nudism, anarchism, vegetarianism and free love were accepted as part of a politically radical way of life. In the 1920s the inhabitants of the anarchist community at Whiteway, near Stroud in Gloucestershire, shocked the conservative residents of the area with their shameless nudity. In Italy, during the IX Congress of the Italian Anarchist Federation in Carrara in 1965, a group decided to split off from this organization and created the Gruppi di Iniziativa Anarchica. In the 70s it mostly comprised veteran individualist anarchists with a pacifism orientation, naturism, etc. Topic. Criticisms 
American anarcho-syndicalist Sam Dolgoff shows some of the criticism that some people on the other anarchist currents at the time had for anarcho-naturist tendencies. Speaking of life at the Stelton Colony of New York in the 1930s, noted with disdain that it, like other colonies, was infested by vegetarians, naturists, nudists, and other cultists, who sidetracked true anarchist goals. Quote, One resident always went barefoot, ate raw food, mostly nuts and raisins, and refused to use a tractor, being opposed to machinery, and he didn't want to abuse horses, so he dug the earth himself. Such self-proclaimed anarchists were in reality ox-cart anarchists, Dolgoff said, who opposed organization and wanted to return to a simpler life. Quote, in an interview with Paul Average before his death, Dolgoff also grumbled, I am sick and tired of these half-assed artists and poets who object to organization and want only to play with their belly buttons. See also Naturism Adamites Anarcho-primitivism Freedomites Green anarchism Individualist anarchism in Europe Lebensreform Lifestyle anarchism Eco-communalism <laughs>